It's always a tragedy when a piece of technology's true potential gets masked behind gimmicks and marketing. In this episode of Failed Innovation, I want to take a look at an ahead of its time concept that had it not been for its poor marketing, could have changed the face of the industry. So join me as we take a look at the Atari MindLink. By the 1980s, Atari was one of the industry leaders in computer and home entertainment. Their 8-bit home computer series were atop sales charts alongside Apple and Commodore, and their home console, the 2600, sat as the king of the home console video game industry. Always looking to innovate and looking for the next big thing that would catch on, one of Atari's engineering subsidies turned to science fiction for inspiration. You see, for decades, the idea of interfacing humans with computer technology was an exotic premise that everyone felt humanity was on the cusp of accomplishing. Drawing from this, Atari wanted to make the first peripheral that would allow the user to control their computer and or 2600 game console by thought. Atari engineers got to work, and in 1983 an early prototype of the Atari MindLink was made up. Its initial design was revamped and Atari was set to roll out the MindLink by mid-1984. A marketing campaign was made up, advertising the MindLink as a way to control your technology through your mind. However, this wasn't entirely true. You see, commercial technology in the early 1980s wasn't advanced enough to accomplish the feat of being able to allow human brain patterns to control an electronic device, let alone a complex task such as computer navigation. So instead, Atari built the MindLink with a set of sensors that detected muscle movements in the user's forehead. A flawed design, but enticing nonetheless. Atari still greenlit the MindLink for distribution, however one month after the introduction of the MindLink, Atari's consumer electronics and computer divisions were sold to Tremiel Technologies. Jack Tremiel saw the MindLink as a toy. Once it was demonstrated, the MindLink could be attached to another muscle group such as the bicep and the user could train the muscles to control the unit as it would being strapped to the forehead. Development was cancelled immediately after at the cost of millions of dollars. Shortly after its cancellation, a proposal from Rafer Johnson, Olympic champion and then president of Special Olympics was brought forth. The proposal was for Atari to use the mind link to develop a control mechanism that would strap to the forehead and biceps and would open the doors for computer systems and programs that could be used by the physically handicapped. But due to all the money lost and legalities involved, Atari declined the proposal and no such device was ever made. What could have revolutionized not just the video game industry, but technology as a whole and could have gave thousands of physically disabled and handicapped access to currently existing computer technology was lost by poor marketing and gimmick structure. The MindLink could have paved the way for a future of alternative computer technology accessible to millions despite physical limitations, but instead it was just another failed innovation. Till next time, this is Ness, signing out.